Digital marketing expert Zach Spuckler was able to get good qualified leads six times cheaper with a simple twist on the typical marketing funnel. So what's this perpetual marketing machine all about? And more importantly, how can you build your own to get similar results? It's all about to be revealed. So this is your typical sales funnel. Cold leads go in the top, and if you're lucky, some warm prospects come out the bottom as customers. But what about the ones who don't make it to the bottom? What happens to those people? Well, the harsh truth is most sales funnels don't really care or account for them. They're simply looked at as the ones that got away or as the cost of doing business. What a waste. What if I told you there was a new kind of sales funnel with a very different, more well-rounded shape? It's not a straight top to bottom line, but a sphere that continually spins and expands, fueling itself the whole time. As a result, prospects are constantly engaged and will willingly stay inside your sphere for as long as it takes to eventually be won over. I first heard about this better kind of funnel on Zach Spuckler's marketing podcast. Uh, Zach's the founder of Heart Soul Hustle, and this is actually his concept. He calls it the sphere of influence. And during a recent promotion, he actually tested this concept by advertising the exact same offer to both cold leads and to his warm audience that he developed with this system. So we'll get to those results a little bit later, but they're dramatic to say the least. So for now, let's just break down what the sphere of influence is, how to use it, and then how to leverage it to get the most out of your marketing time, effort, and dollars. So the sphere of influence is this concept that you're always growing your warm market, right? And I think a lot of times as businesses, we're so focused on how do I get the customer? How do I get people in the door and paying me? And sometimes we have to take a step back and we have to say, how do I get people aware of me? How do I get people to know who I am? So that when you ask for the sale, when you ask people to buy your service, when you ask people to work with you, they're not just blindly like strangers off the street, right? And that means that it's easier to, to get those people to buy the product. And most importantly, people aren't asking like a million qualifying questions and then saying, I need to think about it or I need to decide if I wanna do this. People are coming to you primed to buy your service. So that's what it does, but what exactly is a sphere of influence made up of? First, in the center of it, you've got your warm audience. They can get pulled into your sphere through any of these four key pieces. Your email list, your core content, your advertising, and your social media. So the, the goal or the way all these work together is they grow this pool, the, the middle of the sphere of people that you can put your offers in front of who are more likely to buy them. Every piece of the sphere acts as both an engagement strategy, uh, a nurture strategy, but also an on-ramp. And the way that I like to think about it, what makes it a sphere is that all of these pieces are interconnected, right? So your email list, if you grow that, it's gonna make your advertising costs more effective because you can ultimately advertise to the people on your list. If you are publishing core content regularly, it's going to get more people on your list and more people following you on social media. And if you're advertising all the time, you can amplify all the other three. You can amplify your social reach, your content reach, your email list size. And so all of these pieces ultimately work together. And we say it's kind of like, imagine that every time you amplify any piece of it, the, the wheel kind of spins faster and expands outward, like centripetal force. It's like you're literally expanding this sphere. And the expansion of that sphere means that you have a wider, warm audience. So let's just look at each of these four key pieces one at a time so you can see the impact that they each have on each other piece, starting with your email list. I think of email list for us personally as like the linchpin of the sphere, right? You can amplify everything, but the reality is growing your email list, growing your, your list of leads is always gonna be the most effective way to get more people into your sphere because you can use it to directly amplify every other piece of the sphere. So for example, if I publish a blog post or write a podcast, I can amplify that with an email to my list. If I want my ads to be more effective, I can run them to people who are on my list. If I want more people to follow me on social media, I can publish a live video or an Instagram post or a Facebook post and then 
email it to my list and say, come check it out. And how do ads help grow the sphere? So we use Facebook and Instagram ads. We recommend our clients at least be spending $10 a day to some sort of opt-in offer, freebie, essentially a name and email in exchange for something, whether that be a discount on your service, a free PDF, a workbook, a checklist. So if we're always growing our list, we're always growing that linchpin. So running a lead format on Facebook or Instagram will help you build your email list and your ad costs will be way cheaper because you're not paying that premium that they tend to charge to take people off of the platform. You can also put about three to $5 a day into amplifying your content. And that can be your social media content or blog, podcast, YouTube channel. We wanna amplify our content. And if we're amplifying our content with like engagement ads or ads on Facebook and Instagram that push more people to follow us, we're also amplifying the way that our social and core content reaches more people. Okay, so now let's talk core content. What's that piece all about? Sure, so there's a bunch of different types of core content that you can put together. There's you know YouTube videos, there's podcasts, there's blog posts. I'm a huge advocate for blogs and podcasts because you can put them on your website and people can discover them through Google over time. And that can be really, really effective for growing that piece of the sphere kind of on its own independently. The reason I include YouTube is that it's a highly discoverable, highly monetizable, um, highly, I don't want to say owned because anytime you're on somebody else's platform, you know, you don't own that content, but YouTube is one of those unique ones where it's like, you really do own the content. You can go in and download it. You can embed it on your website, but it's a piece of content that kind of lives on the internet and grows on its own. People want to kind of be aware of your offers or know about your offers or know about you. And you can position your content as like essentially pre-sale content that primes and prepares people to want to work with you. That's what the core content does. And then we have social media. So your social media allows you to reach new people and expand your following, but it also provides social proof. The flip side of that coin, which I just kind of mentioned, is that it also expands your following and your reach. So things like Instagram Reels, TikToks, um, even Facebook Reels right now are getting kind of popular. Those let us reach new people. And from the sphere of influence perspective, if people like, comment, share, engage with your social content, we can retarget those audiences to get them on our email list, to get them reading our core content, to um, redirect them back to our other social media platforms just to stay top of mind. So everything's connected. Your ads, email, core content, and social media all interconnect to build this sphere. When you put money into ads, it fuels momentum through the other pieces of the sphere. When you email your list, it pushes momentum to your core content. When you post your core content and share it on social media, it pushes more people onto your email list. All these elements are working together to create this sphere that's in constant motion. And at the center of that sphere is your warm, highly retargetable audience. So this sphere of influence helps you build multiple audiences that you can then retarget, right? So can you walk us through those? Yeah, so from an advertising perspective, there are five core audiences that this builds. Your email list, your website traffic, your Facebook engagement, your Instagram engagement, and potentially if you do video content, you can retarget video engagement. So you're always able to build these five audiences. Now from a, a, from, from a non-advertising perspective, you're also growing your email list and you're growing your social media, right? So advertising perspective, you got five audiences that you can literally run ads to. From an organic perspective, you now have your email list and your social following that you can always put content in front of. And that's when we would wanna actually use those retargeting options to put real offers in front of them. Let's say you cut lawns or you do landscaping, right? You could say, we will come out, we will assess, and we will mow your lawn for the first time for $99. The goal there is not to make money on the $99. The goal is to acquire a customer at break even or even potentially a small loss because once you're there and you can assess and say, hey, we'd love to come back every week. It's 300 bucks a month and we'd love to retain you as a client. You don't pay for that again. And so that's what we do. We say rather than try and convince people to give us $100, um, in our case, we're doing something for $25, we're not saying, how do I convince people cold on the internet to pay me $25? We're saying, 
how do I get people in my sphere of influence to become a customer at a low or break even cost so that my customers become repeat customers. And so if you really want to get like super nerdy about it, there's kind of like this center point of the sphere, which is not just your warm audience, but your customers. And they expand out and fuel the entire thing as well through referrals, through repeat purchases, through recurring revenue. And that ultimately grows the sphere as well. And Zach recently ran a promotion to cold audiences who'd never heard of him before, just using Facebook ads. At the same time, he ran a retargeting ad to his sphere. Here's what happened. The cost to bring in a new paying customer from his cold ads was $104.57. Now compare that with the $17.39 he spent per customer through his sphere of influence. That's six times cheaper. So what are some really tactical, tangible things that you can do to expand your sphere of influence? Number one, growing your email list with Facebook lead ads. Now, you do need some kind of lead magnet content or freebie that you're gonna offer in exchange for their email address, but then you're just gonna run a simple lead ad selling the result that they can get from that piece of content. Number two, run engagement ads. You know, for just one or two bucks a day, you can make sure that you're top of mind with your sphere of influence and encourage them to follow you on social. You can use a new post, but it usually works best just to run your best performing Instagram or Facebook post as your ad and target those six audiences. Website audience, email list, Facebook forms, Instagram and Facebook engagement, and video view audiences. Number three, post on social. And I do highly recommend giving yourself an advantage here by focusing primarily on posting reels. You'll get way more reach than you'd get with any other type of post. And the bonus is you can repurpose these short form vertical videos just about everywhere to expand your sphere even more. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, even Pinterest. You don't have to post every day, but when you do post, you'll be reaching as many people as possible. Number four, quality content. Figure out if you wanna create blog posts, YouTube videos, or podcasts that serve your audience and provide real value. Just make sure they're discoverable through SEO and that they're available on your website. Number five, regular communication with your email list. So this is a great way to build relationships with your audience and keep them engaged. I recommend emailing your list weekly and providing value in every email. So make sure you're nurturing your list between promotions so that when you do wanna promote something, you already have people who know, like, and trust you. And because email is such an important piece of this puzzle, your next step is to watch this video where I show you exactly how to do it right and how to create that lead magnet that you'll need to offer in exchange for your future customers' email addresses. So click right here and I'll show you what you need to get those big time results. I'll see you there.